Hi, RJ Waters here with National Trash Valet, and today we're going to talk about the service valet FAQs or frequently asked questions. So actually, I've, con I've put, probably put together a thing about a list of 16 questions that we get asked pretty frequently. Um, so if you ever have a question about a valet, I I'm guessing it's probably going to be answered in uh, this FAQ section. So let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, question number one, how do you determine the best route? So for a service valet, um, have them start at the furthest spot from the dumpster. If there's multiple dumpsters and multiple buildings, uh, you'll have to just kind of map out a plan of uh, the furthest spot from a dumpster and kind of time it and get an idea of what that, that route will be. Question number two, can I use a car on site or does it need to be a pickup truck? Well, you could use a car if you need to, if it's just driving to the location and they've got all the bins there that you need and you're just servicing down to the bins. Uh, you know, that definitely would work. If you're at an apartment complex that say has just one singular trash compactor and there are 300 units uh, and it's all the way on the other side of, of the complex, you know, a truck might be preferred because you could service a section of the community, come down, throw the trash in the back of the truck, drive it down to, uh, you know, the, the, the compactor. Question three, what type of violations do you see the most? So uh, they're really the common ones, right? Too many trash bags, excessive trash, right? Uh, you know, someone instead of just filling one bag in, they, they might be new or they just might be a repeat offender. They're putting out two or three or they had a party that weekend. And you're coming back on Sunday uh, and there's four bags of trash out and they're all like liquor bottles or, or beer cans or something. Uh, loose trash with no bag. So I don't understand why people use a trash can without a bag in it. It blows my mind. Um, it just even as a homeowner or someone living in that apartment complex, would you really want a trash can that doesn't have a bag in it with, you know, potential juices that leak in and all that stuff? I just, I don't understand it, but you see it uh, from time to time, people that just use the trash can as a trash can with no trash bag. Um, and then uh, for instance, a trash container not used. So this almost falls under the too many bags or the excessive trash. At least they're using a container to kind of stack trash bags on top of it. In this case, this person just doesn't care. They just open it up the door and set it out. You know, they might have the trash container on their back patio as a footstool. You have no idea really uh, on what they're using it for at that point. Um, so those are really the three biggest that we come across the most. How quickly should the service be completed? So I'd say uh, it depends really on, you know, your valet, the speed, but try to keep it between um, 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. if you do nightly service. Uh, sometimes people try to do more apartment complexes by doing a morning service, um, but usually that 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, because people aren't going to be there uh, with the property management company and the sales team to look at apartments. Uh, you know, you want to kind of, we're trying to kind of hide the service, right? It's there as an amenity. You don't see the person, but they come in and service the trash every night. So try to keep it between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. if possible. Um, otherwise, when you get towards 12, it kind of gets a little, you know, shady in cases where someone's coming up to their door and, you know, ruffling around to pull trash out. You just never know uh, that person on the other side, uh, how they're going to react to that if they think they're getting robbed or something. Um, so on average, it's one hour per 100 units. Uh, but we do, once again, see the heaviest flow of uh, garbage and trash on that Sunday, that first day back, if you're doing a five-day service. Um, but then it gets lighter during the week, right? So that first that first night back, you might be at that hundred that hour per hundred unit. But you know, on a Wednesday, you're only servicing out of a 200 apartment complex. You're only servicing 40 units, and you're done in you know 50 minutes. So uh, it really you know tears uh, tears down or uh, becomes for the most part a quicker as the week goes on. So like I said, the first night back is heavier, so just expect it to take a little longer, uh, and the other days will be quick. Should I still service the trash if there is a violation? Now, this one can go either way. Some people say yes. Some people say no. We, uh, we kind of side on the yes side, right? It depends. I guess it depends on the violation. Uh, if it's something that is serviceable, right? If there is, um, if there's like open bags and it's like loose trash, like on the ground, um, and it's been like in the heat, because especially us in the Southwest and Arizona area, you know, if in the summer it gets up to 110 degrees, if someone threw a pizza on the ground, it's literally cooked to the ground. Uh, that, you know, that's something that we'll have to talk to the property management company about. Um, but for the most part, if there is a violation, uh, we do service it, but we just, uh, you know, make sure to take pictures and to record the violation. Question six. What should I do if I come across someone picking through the dumpsters? Now we've covered this in the training as well. 
Uh, but it's just always a good reminder because we get this question quite a bit. Um, work around them. You know, they're there at, to them. Some people are actually doing it because that's their that's what they do. They'll pick through garbage and they'll sell stuff on eBay for you know chairs or couches or whatever is found because you know you do find when it gets to the first of the month, a lot of kids move out and they just don't care and they throw out couches and they throw out you know chairs and tables and you know bulk items that you know someone could come through and just resell. Um, Otherwise, if they are someone that, you know, could be essentially, uh, you know, maybe a homeless person that's picking actually through there for food or for uh, aluminum cans or something, uh, like I said, just leave them. Usually, if you set the bags in there, they're non-confrontational. They'll probably pick through the bag anyways, uh, and they'll most likely be gone by the time you get back from your next route that you're doing to come back to the dumpster. Um, or if you feel unsafe, um, use another dumpster if there's, you know, multiple on site. Just, you know, if that one starts to fill up, come back to the other one later, because most likely that person picking through the trash will be picking through all the dumpsters at some point, right? Question seven, what should I do if the dumpsters are overflowing with trash? So uh, in this one, we suggest take a picture for your records uh, and move around the trash if possible, if, if they're just bags and you can kind of push them, because sometimes they stack up in the front section. People don't really, when they throw the trash in, they just kind of drop it in. They don't really like try to throw it towards the back. So sometimes you just have to push it and it will even things out and you're able to service uh, pretty seamlessly. Um, take trash to another dumpster. And then also with the picture, uh, email the manager or even not with the picture, you can just hold on to that for your records if, until it escalates or if it does escalate, but just email the manager and tell them once again that they need to do a pickup. Like, hey, you, you, know, you guys are getting only service twice a week. We are seeing that for some reason on this Wednesday, every time we come down, the dumpster is just overflowing and we can't service and do our job to make your community look better if you're uh, not having the right amount of service pickup days for your dumpster. Question eight, what is the best way to track service valets while they're on the property? Uh, this is probably the most asked question we get uh, and we have a couple uh, options that you can do. So. If you wanna go the free route, you can use the Google Maps app. So that can be used across either uh, you know, phone styling platform, uh, an Apple or an Android or uh, whatever, because it's, it's, it's an app, right? You're just downloading the Google app. And then within Google, uh, Google Maps app, within the Google Maps app, you can actually share your location. So you would have that valet share their location when they get to the site um, you know, with you. And then essentially we'll ping you and you can actually like check in on them at any time to make sure they're there. And then at the end of the night, they would just unshare uh, the location with you. Uh, they can do it that way. Or if you tell them, hey, you have to have sharing on the whole time, um, you know, that could be done. But usually they just, it's essentially them checking in and checking out as their uh, time stamps. The only thing is though, at that point, you really don't have as thorough of a record as the next option, uh, which is Boomer. So Boomer is a time tracking and GPS uh, app slash website. So this is a paid service, uh, but you would use it. It does, um, you as the admin would have access, you know, to your admin side pages and you could assign a valet, a login credentials. They download the app. When they get to the site, they essentially log in via the app and it starts counting their hours and slash minutes that they were there along with GPS location. So uh, it actually creates, you can create reports from it later on. Uh, and use it for payroll. And you can also, it's a good way since it's hour tracking, you can say, hey, it's 300 unit apartment complex. You know, it's taking him four hours a night. Why is it taking four hours a night? Then it's something that you can open up a conversation with that valet later to figure out what the issues are, are up. Um, and then in that way too, you can also see performance of good valets. Hey, this there's only a 200 unit complex and this person is getting it done in an hour and 10 minutes a night. Like, this is great. Like maybe we can give them another smaller complex and now they've got two and we're, you know, taking the stress off of, you know, ourselves and, uh, you know, delegating to someone else. So uh, Boomer is a good option. Um, like I said, just because it will time track and GPS uh, locate while they're on, on the property. Question number nine, my turnover for service valets is high. How can I reduce this? Well, uh, it really boils down to pay for the most part, right? Uh, with the job that that this is, uh, it's trash. It's a dirty job. Uh, a lot of people that um, would rather work at, say, a Target or a Walmart or something than, you know, have to deal with trash every night. So that's why you have to be in a position to either offer incentives 
uh, like we showcase here, a hundred dollar bonus. If they show up for all their shifts in a month, we'll throw them a hundred dollar bonus. Or you have to have a really strong base pay. Uh, in our training, you know, we talk anywhere between you know two and four dollars per unit for the valet, uh, you know, for the month for that um, uh, complex. But that's changed now, also too, with the laws because you might be at a uh, at a a state that has a higher required uh, minimum wage, right? So if you're at a state that's got a 10, 12, $15 minimum wage, you know, you might need to at that point offer $20 essentially an hour uh, for that person to, you know, to work, um, you know, those shifts, which still might be good because now it's almost full, not, it's almost full-time pay for, for half the work for part-time work, uh, which is always, you know, great for college kids and, um, you know, other people that are looking for quick cash uh, or consistency and a, a smaller based hour job. Question 10, what do I do if a service valet doesn't show up? Uh, well, there's really only a couple options here. You can either, if, if you're lucky enough to have multiple valets, you can have another valet from a, another property come over to, to help or assist. Um, or uh, if you have multiple valets and you're switching between shifts, you essentially would have one on a call backup um, at the time. But sometimes it can be a little, you know, when you're getting close to that eight o'clock start time and you haven't gotten the GPS notification or you haven't gotten, um, you know, a, a text or like, hey, we're here, anything like that uh, can be a little nerve wracking at times because the next thing is you are servicing the property yourself, right? Service needs to get done. Uh, just not having the valet shouldn't necessarily be an excuse because once again, you are the business owner. So if the property manager has an issue and you're not performing, uh, it is you. It is you that is potentially, you know, losing that contract or having to, uh, you know, find a way to, to rectify the situation and getting another valet there quickly. So no matter what the service needs to be done, that's why we still suggest a five day and night service uh, because seven days is just, it's long. Uh, even if you have one valet that automatically makes you needing to have two valets for that property because no one wants to work seven days in a row, uh, especially a hall and trash room. Question 11, are background checks on service valets necessary? So, uh, we would recommend it for your records uh, and you'd have to check with your state officials if you necessarily wouldn't need that or not. But um, with a background check, you would make, because um, a lot of times valets need to start right away or want to start right away, or you need the valet to start right away, right? So you can always use it as a, uh, a preliminary start. You can start while your background check comes in. And then if your background check is good, you can tend you, uh, you know, on to be part of our, our crew. Uh, but if your background check comes back and it's, you know, there's some blips or negativity on it, uh, we're essentially, we have to move and part ways. Um, so an option to do background checks would, uh, would be clear checks, uh, clearchecks.com. They can do, uh, they do a national and then for an additional smaller, uh, charge, um, it's county searches as well. They're pretty quick on their term turn times. Um, you know, so it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be seven, 15, 30 days to get something back. It's pretty quick within uh, hours to a couple of days, uh, depending on how thorough the, the background check is. Question 12, do I pay for their supplies or do we take it out of their paychecks? Um, so this one you can kind of do either way. Uh, just think of it on the valet side, right? If you're right away taking money out of their paycheck to supply the supplies that they're going to be using, uh, are they going to take care of it more? Probably not. You know, things are going to happen, especially dealing with trash. Bags might get ripped, you know, cut, whatever it is. Um, at the end of the day, they might be irritated if, if you're constantly dinging them for a bill. So uh, we view that it's best to supply everything as much as possible, right? Because then it's just a one-stop shop. Hey, I just need you as a body to move this trash for me. Uh, it sounds kind of funny uh, in a sense when you start to think about it that way. But uh, the service bag, provide it uniform if you want one provide it or you know if they just want to work in uh, a formation or you know jeans and a t-shirt whatever they want to do it's fine uh, a broom or pan if you want to do that for sweeping up you can provide it for around the dumpsters um, you know gloves but like I said we usually use the uh, like a latex version type glove uh, or if they want to buy their own glove like a stronger work glove that's totally fine too we just find with like the latex type it's usually easier because if you're dealing with the trash and you get something that's got leaks, you can easily throw those gloves out that night while you're there at the dumpster. Um, how many properties can a service valet handle in one night? So uh, I would suggest no more than three complexes depending on the size and location. So I thoroughly, as a business owner, I thoroughly 
um, suggest that you do like almost like a dry run. Like if you were a valet, like how many could you handle, you know, in one night? Um, you know, you yourself, like if do you have three complexes that are all 400 units, uh, that might be a little tough to get done in that eight to 12. So at that point, you're either going past 12 and you might be servicing at one and two in the morning. If you're fine with that, okay. You know, you might get some blowback a little bit from the property manager, but um, in this case, if you had three complexes and they're all a hundred units, yeah, you could easily service that in one night. Um, but like I said, depending on the size and location, so you'd almost have to map that out, do a dry run, you know, try to service, Hey, this is 300 units. This would be, you know, on a Tuesday night, 300 units. It would take maybe an hour to service since it's less trash. Uh, it's a 10 minute drive to the next complex. That one's a hundred units. We could be done with that in 25 minutes. And then the next one is a 15 minute drive, but it's 250 units and we can be done with that in you know, an hour and 15 minutes or whatever. Um, so at that point, like that would structure three complexes. You could get that done between eight and 12. Um, I think pretty confidently. So question 14, do I need to write up a service valet if I get negative reports about them? So first, um, in this case, uh, you want to kind of you know, write down everything that, that happens in this situation. If there's an issue with the property manager that says, hey, your service value is doing this, if it is something that is smaller that you can just use a verbal warning for, um, that would be great. Uh, if it's something on your end, we're like, hey, they're constantly showing up late, like give them a couple of verbal warnings. And then at that point, you might just need to start looking for a new valet. So if the same issue persists, then write them up because the write up, uh, the verbal warning, you can kind of write that in their file and, you know, keep a little uh, notation information on them. Uh, in case you need it. And then the same thing, if you actually have to physically write them up, uh, you'd also keep that in your file, in your employment file for them. So a write-up will help uh, your case if you need to let them go over the same issue. So if they're constantly showing up late and you gave them the verbal warning, maybe you give them two verbal warnings, and then you wrote them up once, and you wrote them up twice, and you're like, hey, I do a three-strike policy. Like you've been late, essentially two verbal warnings and now three written warnings. I, I can't, I can't uh, have you be part of the team anymore. I, you're, you know, you're essentially costing me too much time because I'm having to worry about having to find another valet to cover if you don't show up. Question 15, if I need to fire a service valet, what is the best way to do this? So I would suggest um, there's two ways to do it, right? You could do it on their off day if you meet with them. That does kind of take a lot of time out of your and their scheduling because you're, you know, you might be working and doing your normal business day activities. But a lot of times if you meet with them on, on their off day, uh, you probably won't have access to some of the materials that you'd like to get back. So what's really recommended is um, after one of their shifts. So, cause when they're done with the shift, right, they'll have the collection bag. They'll have, you know, maybe a broom and dustpan if you want that back. They'll have maybe some of the other items that you might feel that you need those back since you're a property, uh, since you're a minute, um, since you are a owner of the business, uh, valet trash business. And, uh, you essentially footed, like we say, stated earlier, you purchased those for them. So uh, you can then let them go at the end of that shift, take the supplies, um, you know, make a note for their file that you are, you know, let them go that day and let them know when their finalized check would, you know, essentially be mailed to them or direct deposit, whatever you had set up for them. And finally, question 16, uh, should I have an employee handbook in place? So, uh, yes, you know, it's good to, you know, as you start small, uh, we don't expect all these things to be happening, but as you progress down growth of a company, you start to get your systems and processes in place, right? And the more you get your systems and processes in place, the easier, the easier, uh, the job itself becomes because then you can refer to those systems and processes. Uh, I just said those all quite a bit, a lot. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, the employee handbook uh, will actually protect you in the long run because it's going to be outlining some of the requirements that you have of that valet or that person that's on your sales staff or you know just an overarching view of your company and what you're expecting of them to represent your company. Uh, so uh, we suggest um, if you're looking for a good option, Rocket Lawyer, uh, rocketlawyer.com forward slash form forward slash employee dash handbook dot RL uh, pound sign forward slash. That's kind of a lot. So what I'll do is I'll include that in the link below um, the video as well. Um, and yeah, you can go check it out. Uh, it's fairly affordable. It would be pretty basic. Uh, and then you can make some corrections. It's not going to be as specific to your valet trash business as it could be. 
uh, in that case, you could take it and probably, uh, sorry, you could take it and go to, um, you know, find an attorney that could really draft something that's specific for your needs as a valet trash business. So those were the, the 16 most frequently asked questions we get, you know, wide range from hiring and firing and employee handbooks. And um, <clears throat> I think we, uh, you know, kind of covered all the bases of even some of the servicing factors. So uh, thank you so much for, you know, joining me on this and we'll see you next time.